Well, a Republican congressional candidate in South Carolina crediting the president and his last-minute endorsement for beating out her Republican counterpart. In a tight race, Kate Arrington winning 50.6 percent of the vote as Mark Sanford loses his first election ever. The race ultimately was reduced down to who was more Trump versus mm -hmm. not, and I lost that race. It's with what my opponent said last night. Her words were, this is the party of Donald J. Trump. I don't believe it's the party of Donald J. Trump. Is your career over in politics, as was written a lot today? Do you agree with that? That would certainly be my take. So is it safe to say that voters side with the president? Here now is the woman who just secured her name on the November ballot, South Carolina state representative and now congressional candidate, Kate Arrington. Thank you very much for joining us early this morning. We appreciate it. Oh, no, thank yeah. you for having me. I love the video that I keep seeing replayed of you. You were so legitimately excited to win. And, you know, that was just <laughs> great to see. You're also excited about President Trump and his agenda moving forward. And lots of folks are saying, look at that, uh, lots of folks saying that that is key to people like you right now running. The support of President Trump is key. Do you agree with that? I think that, yes, I mean, I think the fact that the president, you know, we the people elected the president. Uh, so uh, as a Republican, I, I can tell you, uh, I knocked on more doors. I'm thousands and thousands of doors. And almost every time the question at the door was, do you support our president? Yes or no. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, my opponent, uh, uh, Mark Sanford feels that, you know, he's not Trump enough. I, I don't think he quite gets it. it. It's you're not Republican enough. Um, we're conservative. We want to have our conservative agenda uh, implemented in Washington. And it's something that we're very intent on doing. Uh, so I, I'm, you know, the, the tweet from the president came out about 4 p.m. A good share of the voters had already gone to the polls. Mm -hmm. um, I think the president, uh, even in getting involved, uh, coming out that late, was uh, positive. I think it sent more people to the polls to remember, if we want change, if we want our voices heard in Washington, we need to vote and exercise right. that right and that the, so many have sacrificed yeah, for. Let's take a look at that tweet that you're talking about right now. Uh, this was the one mm -hmm. that came, came in last minute uh, on Election Day. Mark Sanford has been very unhelpful to me in my campaign to make America great again. He is MIA, nothing but trouble. He is better off in Argentina. I fully endorse Katie Arrington for Congress in South Carolina State. I love. She's tough on crime. We'll continue our fight to lower taxes. Vote Katie. And, of course, the reference to Argentina there, a reference to uh, the personal issues, let's just put it that way, uh, that Sanford had yes. there in the state of South Carolina. So he's had a lot of other things going on with him. Uh, but then President mm -hmm. Trump doubled down on it yesterday, the day <laughs> after. He said, my political representatives didn't want me to get involved in the Mark Sanford primary, thinking that Sanford would easily win. But with a few hours left, I felt that Katie was such a good candidate. Sanford was so bad, I had to give it a shot. Congrats to Katie Arrington. And you know, perhaps that is what uh, pushed you over the edge and made you win. But also, you have a significant background. I mean, people say that you're a newcomer to politics. 2016, I think it was, you became the state representative mm -hmm. there. So another example of someone who is not a career politician who's had real-world experience. Absolutely. And I, that was resounding. Um, we sent a businessman to Washington because we were tired of the career politicians in Washington. We were tired of, of not getting results. Um, I went up to the State House uh, in two years. Uh, they, you know, I, I, I shook it up. I, that is what we're supposed to go do is get what we need done for our constituents. I'm intent on doing that in uh, Washington. I'm only going to go for eight years, four terms, if my, my constituents bring me back every two years. And I think that's it's part of the problem in, in the career politicians, the political elite. They feel somehow that they're, uh, that in, they are entitled to these positions. And they're things that, you know, mm -hmm. we need to work hard for every two years. I mean, that's why the House is, you know, the, the, the workhorses of, of the legislative body. And that's one thing that I, I plan to uh, fully encompass and be uh, for the next, uh, you know, two years at a minimum. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a a lot of work between now and November, but uh, the 
President Trump's bold conservative agenda is definitely something that resounds with the Republican Party here in South Carolina. Well, you know what? And his uh, number of successes we just heard from the president talking about, you know, the economy, the latest summit with North Korea, all of these things. And it would be wise to, to you know, be a part of those. Uh, Katie, we appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much. And Absolutely. congratulations. Thank you. All right.